Hello and welcome to another episode of the Closure Pills screencast. Uh, this is episode number nine and we are going to see a function called closure data slash diff. The content of the screencast and all the others, all the other closure pills is roughly based on uh, the book I'm writing for Manning called the Closure Standard Library, an annotated guide. And if you enjoy the content of the screencast, you might very well enjoy uh, the content of the book. Uh, which is available at the link that is displayed right now and uh, below is my Twitter handle at Reborg if you have any question. So closure data diff. Um, the name of the function is actually just diff uh, which is the only public function in the closure.data namespace. Uh, that only means that it's not part of the core namespace and when you fire up a REPL uh, closure data diff is not available by default. You just need to require it though, as uh, as not far away. You just need an additional line. Uh, data diff is built on uh, top of a few um, closure concepts, so it builds on top of uh, the equality semantics for collections. So you can compare collections, and the closure is taking care of uh, um, comparing the values inside the collection. Closure data diff sits. Uh, on top of that, uh, a higher level of abstraction, and it allows you to go any level deep into multiple collections, and to verify that uh, those collection to to compare those collection and to output some results that you can then process or look at. So let's have a look. Um, as I said, you need to require it. It's just a require of closure data, and I'm calling uh, the namespace with the alias letter D. So from that point on, I can call diff like this. And uh, in this first example, I'm passing in two hash maps. They uh, have one key and a corresponding value in common. So what you can see is that diff is returning a triplet. And the triplet contains in the first item what is only present in the first collection second item what is only present in the second collection and finally what is common between the two in the last element of the triplet. As uh, said before, um, it diff uh, main uh, purpose is to traverse arbitrarily nested data structures that may also be of different types and as you can see here we have uh, a mix between hash maps and vectors and uh, the result is getting more complicated because uh, the triplet is telling you um, more things in this case. The more, the, the bigger the collections are, the more uh, content will be in the resulting triplet. Uh, probably in this case, the most important thing to notice is the last item of the triplet is telling us that uh, the B key contains something that is common, like one part of the vector that is common between the two hash maps. So um, what we can, what can we compare with uh, diff? So is many things, but not all things are compatible. So there is this um, concept of compatible collections, which is based on Java interfaces. So uh, everything that is a Java util list or everything that is a Java util map or everything that is a Java util set. Between uh, them, those are comparable. So for example, uh, we have here a hash set and a sorted set, two different kind of sets, but those are uh, Java util sets. And so diff uh, is going to return uh, meaningful results. Um, similarly, for hash maps, you have array maps that, are, uh, that have a, a slightly different implementation compared to normal hash maps, but they can uh, compare the same. And um, you can go uh, with uh, native uh, Java list types like array list and compare them with, like for example, a vector of primitives and uh, data diff is... Uh, returning good results also in this case. But you need to be careful. Um, for example, it's not if you mix a non-compatible collection, it's not throwing exception or doing anything wrong, but just 
is not giving you any result. It's, it's considering them two completely different things and the triplet is not telling you what is common or what is not common. And uh, other things that you need to pay attention to is that uh, nil has a meaning for, um, for diff, for positional uh, collections like arrays or list. Um, the nil is the nil that is returned by diff in the triplet is giving you uh, uh, the result of the comparison of that specific index or that specific position in the collection. So in this case, for example, we have two vectors. One of them contains a nil. And when you compare them, if you look at the result, you might just be confused about, uh, if you look at just, for example, the first item in the triplet, you don't know exactly what's going on there. It's telling me that all the elements uh, in uh, the vector are the same, but then if I look at the other uh, items in the triplet, I uh, see that it's not exactly true because there are a few things that are common, a few things that are not. And that is because there is a nil in the collection. So um, it works okay in the sense that you, if you parse the results, you can see what is going on. Um, just be careful that if there are many nils uh, in the collection you are comparing, you might be confused about the results. So uh, it might be required that you get rid of the nils before uh, you do the comparison, depending on the problem. And another thing uh, to consider is that is uh, diff is built on single equal sign equality semantic, not a double equal sign. So if you are comparing for example, two vector, vectors of numbers, since equals uh, one as a long is different from one as a double, uh, also diff uh, will return the same result. And you might be happy or not with that, depending on, on the kind of problem. Uh, good, so uh, where what, what, what are the most common use cases for, for diff? Um, uh, well, there are many. Uh, one that come, comes to mind is uh, regression testing. So if you have, for example, um, uh, some service or some application that is returning uh, data structures, there might be also other formats like HTML, JSON. And if you have a way to convert them into collections, which is usually the case, into closure data structures, uh, then you have a way to feed them to diff and see the differences. So, for example, you, you might want to verify if the latest changes you made to some service are not impacting in the output results. And in order to do that, you just pass the two results and you feed them to diff and then you can analyze them. So, I uh, in this example I prepared, um, I'm assuming that the output of our application or what we are interested in is the Leiningen project CLJ configuration file and this is readily uh, available uh, in the project so it's easy to show to you and is also an interesting nested data structure. So let's see what's inside one of these um, uh, project CLJ files and uh, to do that I'm parsing them with uh, Eden read string because those are our closure data structures as text and so I want to transform them into proper closure data structures in memory to analyze them. If we, if we check for example P, um, PRG, PRJ1 project 1 you can see that is a normal dev project with a few things uh, and nested uh, plugins and dependency and other vectors and so on and so forth. And project two is um, a version that I deployed that is giving me problem, is very similar. I just want to understand, uh, like let's imagine that these structures are uh, huge. I just want to understand where the difference are and think about it, that might be the source of the problem or not. So I can do the, I can have diff doing the heavy lifting of comparing the two. So I'm going to diff project one and project two. And I have, uh, as in return, I have this uh, variable D that contains everything related, the triplet that is not uh, easy to display in a single screen is becoming uh, like a, a big data structure. 
So, um, but I can easily build on top of the results of diff. So uh, probably is just a side effect that you can easily visualize the differences uh, in the output of diff. But uh, what is probably the best thing you can do uh, or the best use you can do of diff is to automate uh, this process and uh, just use those results to extract the information that you need. So to make my life easier, I'm just assigning uh, the three elements of the triplet to three different, uh, different variables, so I can reuse them easily. And uh, I've created here a few um, helpers uh, function. Uh, the first helper is transforming uh, the, uh, the content of one of the triplet uh, that we can now display that is returning back as a vector with many nils and uh, symbols or keywords and so on, is transforming that back into a hash map, is taking pairs, so it's first removing the nils that I don't want to see, and then uh, making that into a hash map. And we can check how it works quickly to see that it's doing what we expect. So for example, let's use it on D1, and we can see that this uh, getting rid of the nils and returning a hash map with one key in this case, which is dependencies, which also means that uh, dependencies is uh, only present in, no, which means that dependencies is present in the first hash, in the first, uh, uh, in the first project, sorry, in the first project. Uh, two keys is another helper and uh, is taking the result of transforming the, the different the, the triplet into a hash and is uh, taking that and is putting it into a set but only the keys because what I'm interested in in finding uh, in this difference is what are the keys that are different and then I'm taking those results and uh, do additional processing and to do that and you can see the results of transforming into keys and it's just returning a set with a key in it and to do that to do that additional uh, processing i'm using uh, set uh, functions set operations and i defined here uh, i basically renamed operations from uh, the set namespace in order to make to have more meaning for this specific example and i've called them added removed and changed and the reason I'm creating these helpers is because then I can do uh, this kind of operations where I can ask what was added between project one and project two or what was removed. And I can see that nothing was removed, but I can see that something was added and in the key Java source paths appeared in project two and was not appearing in project one. And what was changed? So dependencies appears in both projects, but there are differences in the value of that key. So now that I know what I need to look at, uh, one thing is Java source paths appeared. The other is the dependency keys has changed. I can access the dependencies key in both projects and compare the values. And I can see that uh, between the first project and the second project, uh, one library was added and maybe that may is the source of the problem maybe not but what I um, what I uh, what I, uh, the results of this uh, processing of the diff results is that now I know where to look at I can display these results and, and I can I can take action um, one last uh, part of the, uh, the screencast is dedicated to uh, the implementation details and some performance considerations. So there are two or three aspects to consider when talking about data diff. Uh, so one aspect is uh, the traversal of uh, the collection. So the more items there are in the collection independently from in uh, the level how many levels deep they are um, then the more steps I need to take in order to traverse them all and that is an, a linear operation the more items I have in the collections the more steps I need to go uh, to do in order to traverse them and 
the uh, the levels, so the the the, the depth of uh, the collections, the level the levels inside the collection are impacting instead on recursion, and uh, DataDiff is using is is doing recursion on uh, inner collections in order to find the uh, the differences in each inner collection. So the more levels deep I need to go, the more uh, the, the more frames in the stack I need to consume. So there is a limit to that, of course, if, if uh, the um, collections is too many levels deep, uh, I will incur in some stack overflow exception, but this is only happening for really, really deep collections. And if they are so deep, you, you probably have other problems. But I created a little helper function here to just show uh, a few of these facts at the REPL. So this generate function is uh, um, a function that is generating a hash map of n levels deep. So you can see that generate of 10 is generating uh, a hash map that contains another hash map, another hash map 10 times until there is a value of 9. And if I generate uh, like 11 uh, levels deep, you can see that the two maps are uh, different only uh, for the very last inner key, uh, number 10, and uh, for the rest they are all the same. But from the point of view of diff, these two maps are completely different because uh, the first key formed by, like the compound key formed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, um, is different in the very last element, so the two hash maps are different. Why do I care about this? Because if um, the uh, two collections are very similar, then uh, it will take less steps to uh, iterate or to traverse all the elements in the collections. And that is because of the semantic of equal, uh, it will short circuit as soon as uh, it finds out that the two. I, I think I, I, I meant to say the opposite. So if the two collections are very different, then the comparison can uh, stop right away as soon as one uh, one element in the two collection is found to be different between the two. Instead, if they are very similar, uh, diff and equality semantics needs to go through each element of the collection to find out if each and every one of them is the same or not until the end. So we, with what we generated here, we generate the worst case scenario. So if we try though uh, the uh, best scenario instead uh, by just diffing two hash maps that are exactly the same, you can see that it's going very fast uh, is doing from 10 to 20 levels deep uh, and since it's short secreting uh, it's returning very fast. As soon as we pass in collections that are different in the very last element in this case then uh, diff needs to go through all the elements cannot short secret and then uh, the times are increasing. You can see that for each level that we, we go deep, uh, the time is roughly doubling. So we're still talking about linear time, uh, so you don't necessarily need to be concerned. And also we are not going anywhere near to exhausting the stack with 20 levels deep. Uh, we would need, um, that would be um, like um, death traversal will be a log, um, a log n um, a big O log N operation and uh, you will need probably hundreds of levels uh, deep in order to go in Stack Overflow and if you have a, um, a collection with so many levels deep you probably have other problems I think. Um, I think it's all um, I wanted to say about diff. Um, so I as usual, I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, this screencast and uh, the show notes will be readily available at the Closure Pills GitHub project. Uh, the link of the project is uh, shown on the slide. And uh, as usual, I hope, hope enjoy, uh, you enjoyed the, the screencast and until uh, the next time, goodbye.